everyone! In this video I'm going to discuss simultaneous move games in game theory. I'm going to go through understanding the setup for simultaneous move games, how to find any Nash equilibrium, and whilst we go through that I'm going to discuss how to identify dominant strategies and dominant strategy equilibrium. So please check the description for timestamps for the different parts of the video if you're more interested in some of these parts rather than others. In the video, I'm going to go through this example here. So let's start by explaining the setup of the table. In this game, we have two players, Mary and Harley. We say that the player to the left of the table is on the spot of player one, and the player above the table is in the spot of player two. The number of rows in the table corresponds to the number of possible actions that Mary, or player one, can take. In this game, Mary can either go up or down. The number of columns corresponds to the number of actions that Harley or player two can undertake. In this game, Harley can play up or down. The numbers in the cells in our table detail the payoffs that each player will get for each possible outcome of the game, with player one's payoff listed first and then player two's. So in our game, if Mary and Harley both play up, then both players get 10 as a payoff. If Mary goes up and Harley goes down, then Mary gets eight and Harley gets four. If Mary goes down and Harley goes up, then Mary gets four and Harley gets eight. If both of our players go down, then both will get five. So now that we understand the game, we can solve for the game's Nash equilibrium. A Nash equilibrium is an outcome where no player has an incentive to change their behavior given what the other player is doing. Not all games have Nash equilibrium and some games have more than one Nash equilibrium. The first step is to find our best responses. To find our best responses, we're going to consider from the perspective of each player what the best response would be to each of the possible actions that the other player could undertake. So let's start by imagining that we're Mary. To find Mary's best responses, we have to consider each of the possible actions that Harley can take and think about what Mary's best response to those actions would be. So if Harley chooses to go up, we're on this column here. If Mary goes up, she would get a payoff of 10. If Mary were to go down, she would get a payoff of four. Now, since Mary would prefer to get the highest payoff, in this case, we can tell that the best response for Mary is to go up. To indicate this, we're going to underline below the payoff here. And this is a record that up is Mary's best response to Harley's going up. So now we switch to Harley's other possible move, which is down. So we'd be on this column here. Okay, well, if Mary goes up, she'll get eight. And if Mary goes down, she'll get five. So again, up is the best response. Since up is the best response for Mary, regardless of what Harley does, then up is what we call a dominant strategy for Mary. So just to repeat in another way, for all of Harley's possible actions, up or down, up is Mary's best response, and this makes up a dominant strategy for Mary. Now that we've considered Mary's best responses to each of Harley's actions, we can switch players and imagine that we're Harley, and we can consider Harley's best responses to all of Mary's possible moves. Well, if Mary goes up, we're going to focus on this row here. And remember, Harley is player two, so his payoff is the second number in the cell. If Harley goes up, then he'll get 10. If Harley goes down, he'll get four. So up is a best response and I'll underline there. If we switch to the other possible move for Mary, so if Mary plays down, well, Harley could go up and get eight or down and get five. So up is a best response here. So just like the case of Mary, up is a dominant strategy for Harley, since regardless of what Mary does, up is a best response. So both of our players have dominant strategies here. This is in part so I can show you a dominant strategy equilibrium. If you would like to see examples of games with non-dominant strategies, I have a practice video and I'll link to it in the description below and also above somewhere. 
Now that we've gone through finding best responses, we need to find a Nash equilibrium. A Nash equilibrium is going to be an outcome where none of our players will have an incentive to move given what the other player has done. Essentially, this means our Nash equilibrium is going to be an outcome where all of our players are playing best responses to one another. So to look for our Nash equilibrium, we need to look for any outcomes where there are two lines in one cell. In these outcomes, everyone is playing a best response to one another, and so no one has an incentive to change their behavior given what the other player has done. And actually, we can see that if both of our players play up, then this happens, because both of our players will be playing best responses to each other. And so up, up is a Nash equilibrium. We describe the Nash equilibrium in words by just writing down player one's action or strategy and then player two's action or strategy, just all in parentheses. so just like this. So just to describe Nash equilibrium a little more, it's sometimes described as where there is no possible unilateral deviation that is profitable from either player. So neither player can increase his or her payoff by choosing an action different from the one that they're currently doing. This is an equilibrium result because if we end up at this outcome, it's very stable. No one has any incentive to change their behavior. Now up, up happens also to be a dominant strategy equilibrium because as we said before, up is a dominant strategy for both Mary and Harley. So when both of our players here are playing up, they're also both playing their dominant strategies. So just to recap, a Nash equilibrium is going to be an outcome where no player has an incentive to change their behavior given what the other player is doing. We can find Nash equilibrium by finding best responses. And we're looking for outcomes where all of our players are playing best responses to one another. And we're looking for those two lines in the one cell. Dominant strategies are actions or strategies that a player should take regardless of what the other player does. In other words, these are strategies or actions that are best responses to every possible action of a player's opponent. Dominant strategy equilibrium and Nash equilibrium that are also intersections of players' dominant strategies. Okay, that's it. I hope that that helped. Um, if it did, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are having a lovely, a lovely day or night.